argument the majority will understand what I mean. It's a uh, very instrumental in the address of the school. It's called Bayan Koma. Many of you have heard of him. It's very sad to hear one day that he has left us and joined the majority. He won the end of the majority as well. So, so at something like this, when a lot has been said about you, the good thing is that I insist if you say anything that tributes and say even I'm alive or when I die, I will not see you again. Okay. That time you use the past tense. He was, he was. So please, you shouldn't have cut short the words. I'll add more on this time so that we can become a speech right. So we have um, a big matter on our hand. I mean, land law. I mean, land for me is the biggest gift that God ever gave us. Second to life. Because even without land, we cannot retain our life. Everything we have, our whole existence depends on land. And it is very interesting that. If you want to put up a building right now, you have to make some trenches or foundation. You have to lay iron rods before you can put your property on. A God who created the earth never puts iron rods on. And yet it's so firm that it can carry any load without sinking, unless we engage in galaxy to create big holes and wells underneath. So that's how important land is. It's the best inheritance, but I would say, second to education. So we are looking at land law or movable property. That's the statutory name. That's why here we don't call it land law, like the UK and other places. So we call it movable property. Because statutorily, that is the name of the court. But we cannot deal with such a big matter without knowing the laws of grammar. For me, every subject I touch on, I deem it very imperative to draw my audience's attention to or remind them of the laws of grammar. Because otherwise, we miss the point. And there's nowhere better to find the laws of grammar than in the Constitution itself. So we go to Article 11. It spells out the loss of Ghana. What is there as loss of Ghana is what some refer to as sources of laws. In our case, we are not calling it sources of laws, we are calling it the loss of Ghana itself. In the loss of Ghana, we are told when we go into the constitution itself, it says, Me, this constitution is one of the laws of Ghana. Some have said that. In order of precedence, that is how we should respect it. So we have the constitution itself saying that I have the law or one of the laws of Ghana. In Article 2, Article 1, 2, and 2, 1 also have clearly stated that the laws of Ghana shall include the constitution, which is the supreme law, any other law that is inconsistent with it or in contravention of the constitution shall be declared void. I have to shift because I teach constitutional law, so sometimes I get tempted to move too much into it. So, until recently, in 2020 December, we had scattered laws on matters that relate to land, land position of land, alienation of land, registration of land, and the rest of them. And then it became necessary for us to consolidate all these pieces of laws into one law, and it's called the Lands Act 2020 Act. That's what? Fantastic. Yes. So, making my way be easier for you than I thought. All right. So, but that did not take away, and of course, couldn't have taken away the constitutional provisions on acquisition of, of land. So yeah. we will come to a situation where 
if you ignore these constitutional provisions and rely solely on the NAC law, you will find that there are a few instances where you can argue that some provisions in the NAC law contravene the provision or some provisions of the Constitution. And so it's important that we look critically at these provisions in the Constitution itself and at the of interest in land and how the Constitution has adversely or otherwise affected interest in land in this country. But we may have to always look at these provisions if we have time to look at them and see the extent to which they have affected interest in land. <laughs> so we'll make it interactive. That's how I interact with my students. They always say to me, yes. So what are interests in land? Everything comes to teach and I to interact. Interest in land. Can I list some of the interests in land? Interest in land. Okay. We heard of Alulia interest, but which is rather referred to our Alulia title. And then what you follow? We now need to use Okay, let's take this structure. I will ask you what that means. This is factory and then customary freehold, yes, followed by common law freehold, yes. This all right, okay. Any other interest in that? Okay, so tenancy or oh. okay, so under tenancy, somebody says we have common law tenancy. And another person says we have customary tenancy. All right, we can live with them. That's, yeah. Okay, so what is the difference between the refractory interest and the three goal? Are you starting today or this is fortunately <laughs> my friend has also usually teaches this at the same from good teaching? Yes. Okay, then we'll start reading. <laughs> but I think you should. Seriously, go to the land that and try as much as possible to familiarize yourself. So, the land act has been defined interest in land, that's section two, to include a lawyer title. And as I said, the only one that has title and not interest, even though generally they are all considered as interest in land. So, we have the alumnia title, customary law free code. Common law free hold, the suffragory interest, leasehold interest, and customary tenancy. But the focus really is so much on Alodia interest. The Alodia interest is the primary interest from which all other interests flow. So if you have an Alodia title, it means that from there, you can carve out the freehold interest, whether as customary or as common law. You can also carve out a lease. And you can, of course, carve out other interests, including the tenancy, which has its own peculiar interest per se. We deem it as just a right to use of land and its benefits. That we are moved from it. So, customary law has been determined by the court as being customary law. But more importantly, the rules that are applicable to particular communities in Ghana. So, obviously, in terms of that strand of customary law, it may differ from community to community. 
and they will be consolidated by the courts where the courts make pronouncements of them. Then it becomes universal. But until that, we have customary law consisting of those that have been determined by the courts on one hand, and those that are rules that are applicable to communities of a particular area. If you are looking at customary law freehold, you will be looking at the customs and practices and usages of the particular area where the land is situated. And that's very important because then when you come to do conveyancing and the laws, even at this stage, when you are doing due diligence before acquisition of land, you do not, especially if it's a customary land, you do not impose the custom of other people to that particular area and say and conclude on that basis that because of that, then these people or this group of people own the land. Or you know in that community, the students there don't own land. But because you think that in your area, students own land necessarily, then you go to say Pram Pram. And as the chief who says, this is a stool land, I want to sell to you. Oh, yes, I mean, in my area, we also have stools that own land. Unknown to you, stools don't own land in Rampan. And that's a matter of fact. That's been pronounced on by the judiciary as well. So it's important that when you are looking at these steps, you go to the roots and ask yourself how relevant it is to understand the custom. Then you go to freehold, as common law freehold. Again, you must understand what is common law. Unfortunately, the constitution has declined common law. If you have a constitution, and you go to Article 11, let's try and understand these terms quickly. Somebody can read it to our here. Article 11. I think as lawyers, we must form the habit of holding books, even though the technology has tried to take over the importance of books, copies on the table, only about 1,000 plus pages. <laughs> and someone said, ah, I do write such a book. Well, we lawyers is part of the means by which we can legitimately get a living. Uh, we get it. <laughs> so we come to my table and there's this big book there. Well, I've been with it. Oh, well, this is it. I've read it. But for all you know, it's only a law report for the person. Yes. How will you pay a lawyer? That's where you know he spends time to read it. But if he has even written it, that one, he will be double the <laughs> Yes, so we are accustomed to that. I mean, and I will urge you to get the law reports if they have come. Fortunately, the Council for Law Reporting, who are statutorily responsible for law reports, they have subsidized it for students. Alright, so we just, I think Nana, I can live with Nana. We had an interview recently where lawyers appear, they want to get some positions in the judiciary. Nearly all of them have been reported for. And it's a shame indeed. What you get from the law reports, the, the Jubilee and my own good friend Dennis cannot get for you. In any case, despite the creative, so you have a visitor that comes to your room and books are littered virtually on the wall. No, it didn't mean it. So don't attempt. Because after reading all this and I've just started, it's not an easy thing at all. You will start being afraid of you. 
Every little thing, oh lawyer, what do you think about it? <laughs> your decision is final. You don't know. <laughs> and he respects you because he's been reading all these books. Meanwhile, it is only when the case comes that you look for the citation. Yes, but I mean, it, it is the best investment, to be honest with you. Spend on books, and the books are very tired. I'm not discounting the importance of technology. I have one. I, I think I'm one of the most addicted Apple fan. I, I can't leave when I hear there's a new Apple phone. And I, I just can't survive. I have to get it. That's that terrible. But I'm a born at a computer, but very little, <laughs> very little about it. But I fancy it. But I don't let it replace my love for books. Right. So that's just by the way. So when you take, yes, somebody was reading people. This time your punishment to be you not be reading from your computer or your, your phone, especially. You must hold your constitution. Yes, and it should not be that bridge one. You go to Ghana Publishing, they have they have this constitution there. You will be Subsidizes for you. All right, you want me to read for Chapter 4 The Laws of Ghana, Article 11, Clause 1. The laws of Ghana shall comprise A. This constitution, B. Enactment made by or under the authority of parliament established by this constitution, C. Any orders, rules, and regulations made by any person or authority. Under a power in this constitution, D, the existing law in E, the common law. The common law of Ghana shall comprise the rules of all law generally known as the common law, the rules generally known as the doctrines of equity and the doctrines of customary law, including those determined by the superior courts of judicature. Realize that you realize that the constitution uses the term circumstances. So first, common law being an umbrella, and if I should be politically correct, and that which you have three elements. <laughs> I don't want trouble. Some have cockerels on them. And some have prior and then as well. Anyway. So you have the common law of Ghana, and at that you have three branches of what constitutes the common law of Ghana. So you have the common law, and the interesting thing about law, and I don't fancy defining any term of law, I just say this is my understanding. Because the funny thing is that usually what you are defining is part of the definition. So land means land, and it's perfect. One of the things associated with the definition of land is land itself. So the common law of Ghana comprises one, the rules that are known as the common law, traceable to the United Kingdom or English law, which were assimilated into the laws of Ghana. And then we have the rules known as the rules of equity, which were also or can be traceable to English law. And then we have the customary law. All these three come under the common law of Ghana. All right, so under the customary law, you also have two main parts, as I said. Those that are applicable to communities in Ghana, and those that have been determined to be customary law by the superior court. Okay. So it's always so here the use of the term common law three code is in reference to the second part of common law and not the main part of common law. The main part being the main custom common law of Ghana. So under that, this customary common law. Freehold is in reference to the rules generally known as the common law, and as I said, traceable 
the king is your. And then the common customary law of free gold also is in relation to the rules that are applicable to communities in Ghana or otherwise defined or determined by the superior court. If you understand it this way, then when you are talking about customary law free gold, you are purely looking at rules that are traceable to customs, practices, and usages of a particular community and not rules that relate to common law for people, for example. Is that okay? So it's important to appreciate these things. So the Land Act now defines the customary law of freehold as an absolute interest in land. And I would like you to just underline some of these words. Because I have found some of them worthy of serial discussion and perhaps we will send them questions at them. So, an absolute interest in land which is not subject to any proprietary obligations, but is subject to the fictional and cultural rights of the few of the or clan family which holds their own right title. So, generally, the freehold is an absolute title. But because it is carved out of the alluvial title, it has certain limitations, so to speak, even though it is absolute. So it will come to a time that the freehold interest will be extinguished and it will revert to the alluvial title. Land never dies. That's why sometimes. I find it difficult to understand when somebody says, I have bought a land. I have bought land. Because I can say I have bought a car. That means forever, the original owner's interest is completely established. And I can decide to use the car the way I want it, of course, in accordance with law. But I am not subject to the, any instructions or limitations by the original owner. Neither can there ever be a time where I can be compelled by law to return the car to the original owner. The purchase of the car completely extinguishes the interest of the original owner forever. But that is not so for now. So there is what we call abandonment. There is a concept of abandonment. And at that, quite a number, when a number of events occur, the land will be deemed to have been abandoned. For example, if you acquire the land under customary law, all your descendants, including yourself, vanish from the face of the earth. It will revert to the original owner, even though it's removed. So it will go back to the Alodia types of people. Can also be extinguished completely by law, compulsory acquisition. And another time we find time we can look at compulsory acquisition. Or means by which this interest in land will be extinguished. So we will just go. So even though we say that freehold interest is an absolute interest which is not subject to any proprietary obligations. Like I said, it's subject to the traditional and cultural rights of the student or team or clan or family which holds the alluvial title. And I tell you, this is very controversial, but there's no time to digest them in a way we would have wished. Maybe another time. But the key word there absolute and subject. How can something be absolute? Subject. The subject there means. A form of absoluteness, if you like, as limitations or restrictions. The two words conflict in a way, and I have an issue with that. He said, you be acquired when a person or group of persons, and then says it's of perpetual duration. Of the, and these two words are very critical. Perpetual 
Jerusalem, and it's inheritable and alienable. If it is of perpetual duration, then how can it at the same time be subject to some cultural rights and obligations on the order of the Arabian title? That is quite problematic. So this is what we do when you get lost. If you don't acquire the mind to critique the law, then we shouldn't have even many lawyers because then the law will just be one. But your ability to question what the law is, that is what makes you outstanding. So I don't press until that. But of course, if you don't find conflict with the law, you cannot get a case. But questioning what the law is very smart. So there are, I think if you do jurisprudence, which I think you may not have done, you will see theories of law. Those who say that they are positive, this is the law, and nothing more pretentious. You have the realist, I think I'm one. Yeah. And so what? If that is the law, and so what? If the law is not able to solve human problems. It's law. You don't disobey it. But question it so you find a more alternative law that will solve human problems. And go to the extent of even saying that nothing is law unless it is fashioned to solve human problems. Or prevent the occurrence of problems. Okay. That, that those are some of my readings. Absolute principles. If I start, we will be talking about the students. So, another time. So, don't read these theories. That that's just all that is supposed to be. Why are we training lawyers? So, we are always having this agreement with the law, one party on the other side. And he has his lawyer. And another party on the other side has his lawyer. And because you find fault with the law, that is why we go to court. So in court, we are not talking about just matters in controversy. No. It's matters in controversy that are resolvable by law. If you have simple disagreement and there's no law, so you still go to Article 11. There's no law that you can apply to resolve it. Then try and from the existing law, extract one from it. And let it reflect that this is rather what the lawmaker had intended and not what you see in black and white. And that is how the year of the ordaining and so on, they, they challenge the status quo of the law. Initially, you have problems, but when you continue, you continue to do that, you will see that then. There will be the understanding that, well, that is the purpose of law. So, human problems, and if not, distinguish it and let it solve human problems. So, when you read the land act, you just be guided by this and ask yourself questions. Otherwise, the mere application, and if that is all that we have to do, then there won't be the need to do the respect for you to be prepared. Because the teachers have done the work for us, they taught you how to read the lines. So what else do we need to use with all due respect for you to just come? So we read for you to copy and you get enough fingers and you just go home and then you have the problem. So let's take this. So the same thing will apply to custom new law for you. So you always have to go to practical level. What are these custom new law? And the common law applies to custom new law for you. So you always have to go to practical level. What are these custom new law and the common law? What is common law? So you will use those rules to then match to then match them side by side. Common law to me. It says it's also of perpetual duration and for any other uncertain duration. 
but is subject to the interests of the states, the traditional and cultural rights of the soul, and all that we say. It's held free from obligation to any other person. It's inheritable and alienable. Heritable and alienable were also mentioned in relation to communal of the It's all that it means. I hope you understand that. Is that you can alienate it. You can dispose of it in all the forms, whether as a lease, whether as a tenancy, whether as a sublease or any other form. And it's inheritable, I think the word is suggestive of this meaning. You can always pass it on to a descendant or any other person who is always in a will or as a gift to your life. Right. So inheritable and inalienable are the way. Then the usufructory interest. And I can spend about three hours just talking to you about and problem with usufructory interest. These are the, the free will, the customary law free will, but we don't have time. So I've expressed a few of those ways in that small book I spoke to you about. When you go to the dictionary, the Black Law Dictionary, these days you go Google, but the Black Law Dictionary for us lawyers is the most authoritative book of definitions of terms of law. And it defines the use of facts. It defines the use of facts. So if you have the Black Law Dictionary, Oh, in New York City, the interesting way in which the use of rats is defined. You will see from there that the use of rats is a term that was used to describe a situation where you can permit someone to go onto your land to pick some food or have the use of the land at the owner's suffers. So the original etymology of the use of rat is not that you have absolute interest in the land. It is always subject to the means of the owner. So the owner can decide that what is to be a taking it next year, give my land. And so I find that the definition we have as for the understanding that we have under the Land Act assigned to the usufructory interest is not exactly the same as understood under the English law and also in Latin and even in German, where the etymology is reserved to the point I will show you where so you you will find problem with the way we have defined the use of facts. So, but as I said, it is that it's coming from the word to use and the sufferance of the owner. Now, realize that under our law, the usufructory interest is in land is acquired in the exercise of an inherent right by a subject or a member of a school or skin or family or clan which holds a local title through development of all appropriated portion of land of the school of skin and so on. So let's look at the word use. It's acquired in exercise of an inherent right by a subject of a school or a member of a school or family. Inherent right. So maybe just go to Google once I search for where I have it and tell us what the issue facts that we find to do. Mm -hmm. uh, 
The issue tracks. The issue tracks. Yes. Yes. The wife of a deceased person living in an estate house until her death. Yes. Again. Example. The wife of a deceased person living in an estate until her death. It means that it is the kind of right that is distinguishable in both onto the original, but not it or something. Let me also uh, read out what the Black Scott Dictionary has for us. A right for a certain period, and I am very happy with that. A right for a certain period. This is very important because if we don't understand it that way, we'll be having serious problems. So, a right for a certain period to use and enjoy the fruits of another's property for a certain period. For a certain period. Without damaging or diminishing it. But allowing for any natural deterioration in the property. In Roman law, the usufra was considered a personal servitude, resulting in a real right. And the English law, real means property. So real estate, interest, and movable property. That also refers as real. So that's what they mean by real right. In modern civil law, the owner of the usufra is similar to a live tenant. That's very significant. It's similar to a life tenant, like what your friend said. And the owner of the property burdened is known as the naked owner. And the issue fractures, which is the original word, as the right of using and enjoying property to another, provided the substance of the property remain unimpaired. More exactly, a usufruct was the right granted to a man personally to use and enjoy usually for his life. So that, that's enough. We can go back to our definition of the usufruct by the land act. We have the land act with the definition of the usufruct. Right in the exercise of an inherent right by a subject, by a subject, or a member of a school, or a skin, or family, or clan, which holds the alluvial title through the development of an unappropriated portion of the land of the school, or skin, or family, or clan, or by virtue of an express grant. Or B, acquired through settlement for a period of not less than 50 years with the permission of the holder of an earlier title by a non indigent or group of non indigents or the descendants of the non indigent or group of non indigents, except where the settlement is on agreed terms and C, inheritable and alienable. And that's what the emphasis is. The original meaning of the definition. That says it's a life interest, which means it's, it's, I mean, it's not capable of being alienated. I mean, that's the, the interest dies with you, so you cannot even make a will to cover it. So it is not inheritable. The true meaning of this is that those who have one problem with my view have said, Are you saying parliament has no right to assign any definition? To any term that is so wishes. Of course, Parliament has that right. But there are alternative views about that as well. That Parliament might be deemed to know the existing law, to make the law to be consistent with it. And if Parliament wants to advance, there might be clear reasons why we have that. So, the good thing about law is that no one knows the true definitive position of the law. Don't give anybody that credit. 
Otherwise, you'll be intimidated. So you see senior lawyers, and tomorrow I have a case with me class. Is it class in Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because class. Uh, the case with lawyer A class end. Hmm. Because I'm afraid of him, because he taught me some time ago. He was to a calf. Who am I? And all, all the better expression, who am I? Big glass, let's pray. Who am I to go and face this seasoned lawyer? So, what they will do is that in the morning they will call their junior, go and take a date. <laughs> the junior goes to two courses. So, my brother, the senior only gave it to me this morning. He seen his post. You know, somebody has sent me in another court. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he's afraid of big glass. That is the beginning of your doom as a lawyer. Respect seniors, but don't give them credit that they know the law better than you. It's a principle I got to know about early on in my age and has really guided me to now. Respect is at the score to this very noble, noble profession, and which I say you are blessed to have chosen because there's no law on earth that has made any profession more superior than the law itself. There's no authority to that. <laughs> Otherwise, you won't be here I've been acquiring some degrees. Come to law school. Every professional is there. You can't get one lawyer at the medical school at the law that we to learn. It. Not that medicine is too difficult, but it's not the learning profession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so your ability as a lawyer to get a professor of medicine to cry in the box is what makes you more learning. Why would an English professor come to you to write a letter for you? He brings it, can you write it, lawyer? Look at it for me, then he has put Okay, so consideration, so why not? Well, that's consideration going to do? It's a wrong expression in it. Then you tell him, go to law school. You know that constitution <laughs> has a meaning different from the English that you want to do. The only way that will make him come to you to pay you in order to write a letter for you. You understand English better than me. But you understand legal English better than me. Above all, his signature doesn't carry any weight as far as legality is concerned. You are blessed to choose the best profession. Nobody told you. It's, it's the liberator, personally. Changes your life. And if your house is in shackles of poverty, there's no other profession. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I, I test teachers who make it their business. Students as well, and they are happy. If you know what law has done for some of us, you will appreciate and let everybody come to the law. So I don't see the call me, let my people go. <laughs> Case called Ohimi and Ede. 
Yes, so tell us the mode of appreciation expressed in Latin language. You can't do that more without remembering that famous case and what was said in it. Yes. Okay, so there are four principal methods by which a student acquires land and in general in the old ages in the family or individual. Conquest and subsequent settlement thereon. So not just conquest, and we see why the expression is significant. Conquest and subsequent settlement on it. There is not just enough to conquer. You must subdue and bring under your custody and control the portion. So the portion that you are not able to bring under your control cannot be said to have been acquired by you, even though you may have conquered and driven away the vanquished. That's the argument that is being made and supported. And then cultivation by subjects of this tool. Then also a major form is discovery. And by subsequent settlement thereon, the mere fact that you have discovered that you want to entitle you to be the owner of a portion that you have not settled on. So you must always not say discovery, conquer, and then move on. I'm not saying my questions are easy, as you can see. You cannot just list conquest and so on, they said, Charlie, I'm a good woman. Then we have gifts and pitches by the school. I want us to just look again at a few terms here. We have conquest. As you can see now, you cannot use conquest to acquire any land. It's illegal. Move again to Mexico and international. So conquest is no more the mode by which you can acquire land. And that's very clear. Russia, Ukraine. They are not saying they are conquering them to take their land. They are saying that they own a portion of the land that the West have both really taking possession of from them, they are coming back to their right. You don't want to go there because I did Russian language, but you know that I was. Compared Russian with law, I know God saved me. I won't say the foreign language. So there is just a couple of that Russian ways I understand it. And views on what is happening in not in other towns. They have been sent to you, as they say, eh, not to manufacture your own fertilizer. They are somehow selling your own fertilizer. That's the cheap, the direct cheap things are to keep you. So if you, you, do, you don't have fertilizer because somebody is going to fight another country and don't have fertilizer, what has happened to all the land that the cattle? I produce and a farmer as well to the So I don't know what I'm talking about. I started as a farmer and the law was just temporary. I come back. And I come back. This was co-opted me, but conscripted me to go into farming. You know it's a big farmer anyway. So conquest. And so you cannot just take conquest and move on. That is not being analytical with the facts. So you must pause, and we should be able to state that it is important to highlight the point that conquest is no more a legal legitimate way by which you face a man of What do you mean by This is very much more and more. And you <laughs> Okay, so the next one is. Discovery. Discovery. It is now almost impossible to discover any unowned land in Ghana, even though a certain professor, very distinguished, once said that in his village somewhere, 
there are unknown hands. He has been seriously challenged. Which is, I think he couldn't convincingly establish the point that he could join the majority. When we beat him, we will still go and ask. <laughs> so, Prof, where is this on the line so I can go and teach him? And he is so very simple. Outstanding personality and national hope. No doubt about it. So, discovery. It's also a problem now. Then you have to look at voluntary acquisition and involuntary acquisition. Obviously, discovery is voluntary, but conquest is involuntary. So, this opinion again, terms alone can take you about 10 or 15 minutes trying to analyze. And that's what we are being trained to do. That's what distinguishes us from those who have decided to be comfortable with less edifying professions. <laughs> and those of us who have chosen the law. No, sir, they are not calling it for nothing. You must be proud that you are even learning law. I'm sure A class is getting worse from the next music that is he's, he's planning to go and sing. Long Technicalities and origin. And when your case is so bad, choose a mantra. Even the old man does what they do. The case is bad. Choose a mantra. People are rather highlighting it, very happy to discuss it. Everything has now become a baby. <laughs> Obviously, forgetting about the that. Now, people joke about it. It's a typical oratorial skill. It's not a book, all due respect. We've been doing it for many years. I mean, we used to trip to the Supreme Court to see it. We would leave our classroom. And, and where some of them were trained in Salon in France, it's only for oratory and for distinguished people. I mean, it, it, you have money. To blow mansions to heaven, they may not take it. Unless there's a certain pedigree. There used to be one in a small town in Risa. Because Risa was, as well as some of them were able to move their street much more. They have told me sorry before. See, those things have faded out. But your child in this vacation is taken there. It's like a monastery. And they teach you the ways of custom and knowledge alone. When you are bought, that's it. You and I were not there. <laughs> Unfortunately, when you come to the court, everything written submission, written submission. So the acts of oratory and advocacy is almost there. Some of the old books, experiment books. And you see the display of poetry and skill. That's what lawyers used to do. But unfortunately, we are killing it now. We don't get cancer. We get anything else you want to add. Uh, you start selling you a you have already spoken about it. Government is going to do the act of poetry, which is the foundation of legal practice, the dying of us. I'm bringing it back. So I have established what I call the director's project. And part of it is the seminar system. And I was surprised. All that I didn't expect that someone who came for interview and was called to them has absolute knowledge in intellectual property. I've access as to the person that all the lectures will be there to do it. So this is true. You are not deluding yourself. 
And if you are, then it's a problem to think that because you have mastered a particular area of the law, nobody else knows better than you. Know. Just have to be modest in accepting that you don't know it all. So, in this analysis, you will see that you've spoken about voluntary and involuntary ways of conquest, of um, acquisition of interest in land under the Union and the issue. And if you find time, you can continue to analyze them as we move on to another thing. So, the foundation of the laws that regulate land have always been customary law and we should not ever forget that because before the advent of colonialism we had our own legal system which has been described to be in advanced stage before the Zibroni came that you get even season of politics or I'm oh, sorry I don't disagree with people on those lines but you get season so I will go in but you get season Authoritative lawyers saying that the legal system of Ghana is traceable to the advent of colonial rule. But we are find that to be unfortunate. Because what is the legal system? I argue in this book that when you want to know the laws of any particular, you look at the language. Of course, over time, there will be assimilation because of the interplay. So, be in front of something called Jerry Papashi. Yes, no one can or won't implicate himself. That's all that belongs in the name. No one, it is a principle of law. You cannot begin to compare to the things yourself. That one, of course, we need to think to tell us. But as I said, with the interplay, you can get something like mutual damage. Yeah, that they call them it. They used to call it in Pata Sika. And when they interplay, then they started dealing with the whites in, the, in their courts. And they were talking about damage in compensation in Pata Sika or in Pata. And then it become damages. Then they say, oh, then let's be part of the possible new language now. Mutual damages. Today, it still means I'll go to court or an arbitrator to get compensation for wrong than me, for example, trespass to life. And it's the same meaning, mutual damage. So it is also naive to say that we have not benefited at all from Percy Brony's legal system. But it is wrong in my view. Well, I don't agree in my view that can say that our legal system is traceable to the advent of the single this legal system. No. So as we move on, any questions? Let me pause and ask if you have any questions. If you have none, either I have wasted our time with you, either you are indifferent or you cannot be bothered. So I want to ask a question. Okay, I have a question. Right. Keep on. So, my name is Mokutado. This thing that your question is starting with so. <laughs> <laughs> of land back to the Amelia Yes. Uh, we have made property on this land. And of course, we know that now we have some leases that last after 50 years, 100 years. So, when it's still 99, when that period passes, so what happens? Yes. The so land goes back. Yeah, it's a lease. If it's a lease, you are only entitled to it. That's why they say a lease is an interest in land. That is what. That is what. 
That has a commencement date. Expiry date. And if you say expiry, your fees will be smaller. Lawyers, if you do or English, I can say And Latin. So we prefer a determination date. And the professor will be wondering what do you mean by determination date? It's incongruous. They tell me that answer. Go to law school. We prefer expiring. We prefer determination. Even though in basic books you find expiry dates. But I'm saying that always find the real that way there's anything like that. So you use it. So that you can confirm them. <laughs> the determination date is very important. So, so it means that once the determination date occurs, your interest is absolutely extinguished. But there is a case, I think it's in the book that I'm reading, I always remember. This is in reference to the land that is at Accra, that is at Accra of the system. Accra Run for Rollins Park, used to be in the cool house. Now, this call woman, I have some interesting story on call. It's my time up. Action is issued for me to read the night. Who my mind? So, this government, after you go around the Kashi area, when they see that they tell you, they can see the family home. I can build you a family house and then break down this structure so I can construct the store. Right? So, they agreed and signed an agreement for 30 years. Built for them and then constructed a huge story box shop. Then the man died. And a year to the 30 years, they received a letter from lawyers of the family that, well, we are not interested in extending the term of the agreement we had with you. And, and so next year, by this time, we should vacate the premises and yield vacant possession. Thank God for it, but I'm not being here. 30 years, when we have expanded the property, we are coming for it, they went to court. Well, they got some successes, and they got to school. He said, a true co businessman who will enter into an agreement for the acquisition of interest in land to last only for 30 years. I'm not exactly what that goes to it. That was my idea. We lost it. The next time, the property was raised up. Of course, I'm not sure the government. Found it necessary to be a lawyer, at least not be our own. We will be compared to pay a lot of money. So, that is how you can lose, for example, what you said by property. And in that situation, but then this new land has a slightly change that principle. But it stands as a point of law that. What you negotiate is what you get. The court will seldom interfere with the decisions of consenting adults who are composed mentors. Right? So negotiate properly and say that yes, the open for some of the expired by upon determination or soon before or thereafter. The lessee shall request for extension or a 
further term of say 20 years. Such requests shall not be. Okay, then you send it to them, and the other side will also say that. Well, then it comes to you. If you are prudent, you might just say that. The refusal or the request shall not be unreasonably refused or withheld. So my my request that if I'm interested, I'll ask for another 20 year term. You cannot unreasonably withhold. You cannot unreasonably reject the green text. So I will say withhold so you can double the money. If you don't have those words, then you are giving him the liberty to exercise words. Then you are giving him the liberty to exercise a discretion whether or not to extend it for you. From the land acts, the effects of the constitution on but this was the basis of this whole small group you see. I had serious issues with how some of my senior colleagues who are gurus the law of movable property had expressed their opinion on it, but I didn't disagree with them. I only expressed what I call my own alternative view. So, it will take us straight to Article 267. If you have any support, us. 267. Five. This is seven five. Yes, anybody. The ladies who are selling your birthright to read to the men. And it becomes a long term complaint of discrimination. Yes. Nobody's ready. Oh, but well, there's only one constitution in this. Then then uh on this statement. Subject to the provisions of this constitution, no interest in or right over any land in Ghana shall be created with trust in any person or body of persons, a freehold interest, howsoever described. No interest in. This is what the great man, Darucha and Lodo, this is what, this is what they said. Ghana shall be created which rests in any person or body of persons a few interests howsoever described. Then they continue. And so you listen to their understanding of it. The tenor of the above quoted provision in the, in the 1992 constitution is that members of the school or members of the family can as from 7 January the commencement date of the school. Acquire a freehold interest in any land in Ghana in which they are still of family because they are local. Right. So what they are saying is that by Article 2675, not even a subject of a school or a member of a family can acquire a freehold interest in any land owned by the family or the school. This is their understanding. Okay, another great man, Josiah Aye. Fantastic gentleman who has also joined the majority. You know why those writing man on the God save me. I'm not ready to join the majority there. The world is becoming more interesting. They didn't have access to iPhone 4 and so on. iPhone 14 and so on. So God save me. So he also said that he also just refers to the article 267 in the same way and gives his opinion on it, which I will read to you. Then just his name is AJ, very famous for legal books, has also written the book which says. No freehold interest or right of any student in Ghana is to be created in any person or body of person after the coming into force of the Constitution 1992. 
unless the constitution has provided otherwise. And he highlights this. It is therefore forbidden to create a few old interests or rights over any student in either a citizen or non citizen of that. More issues to come. Because the constitution obviously suggests and then distinguish between a subject who is a citizen and a subject who is not a citizen. Then another judge also has written a book on land law, Sage Jew, in one case said, Let me humbly say that since the coming into force of the Constitution, no school can lawfully convey a free hold interest in any school land to any person. Or body of text. Articles 267 says, and he quotes it, in my contention, the position of the law, not to speak. Regrettably, and I want to hide, I use we, attack me. We are not told whether this definitive position was arrived at after a careful reading of the Constitution as a whole, which is what we have to do. And if so, that in spite of the, acquired, the required expenditure of energy, you see, big English high problems, no provision in the constitution was identified to which article two says subject to subject. When we say subject to so and so, and it's in reference to that particular law, as in this case, you must go into the law because the law maker uses. No language in vain. You see another similar provision where it didn't say subject to. It just said no interest in or rights over any land shall be created with less in the person who is not a citizen of Ghana if you hold. So ask yourself, why is it that when it comes to, and that's a two cases, when it comes to citizens, like when it comes to Subjects of a school or members of a family, it says subject to the provisions of this constitution. So it means that there should be another provision in the constitution to which, in some circumstances, this will be subject. It will come under it, it will become subsidiary to it. You have to ask that question and come the constitution. So we go to the constitution itself, and we won't go far, in my view. It says 267, cause 1. That's an interesting definition there. So, since there's only one constitution in this class. You have another one. Okay, so then 2671. We read 75. That's what I read. One for us. 2671. All school lands in Ghana shall first be the appropriate school on behalf of and in trust for the subject of the school in accordance with customary law and usage. Right. Can you highlight the thing? 2671. All school lands in Ghana shall first be the appropriate school on behalf of and in trust for the subject of the school in accordance with customary law and usage. Okay, so we'll digest this behalf. So then I'll, I'll tell my brother, let's go to get to that in his assignment on this alone, and then you present it to me. I'll mark it and return to the papers. <laughs> so we are talking here about customary law interests. First thing in this two. Constitution clearly states that one, no school owns property. That is absolute. The school or the occupant is a trustee only. Once there is a trustee, there must be beneficiaries. For the benefit of subjects of the school, many children agree with me on this, so I have said it already before I go to the <laughs> so, if you are a trustee, you 
you may be a beneficiary as well, but you are not the owner. That's the same equity, common law, understanding of the trust. So the steward is a trustee who holds the property in trust for his subjects. And it doesn't end all. In accordance with custom, is that the subjects, and you go back to him and they're very important. We're talking about conquest. At that time, a group of people will come together and just start to discover. So they were hunters. But as they become many, the animals move back. And as they move back and they, they also follow them to hunt, the distance widens. And at the time they come, evil criminals have come to steal their things. So then why don't you appoint someone to be a caretaker? Or as far as we go, and they are usually what we call the justice. We are in the just in the kitchen. Not just cooking. But we are the watchmen. So they will then go and come back. Then he said that, well, why don't we create a symbol of authority for you? Because then you go to the time, some people do start that oh, they are to enrich the car, then you also do. But it should be one who will take absolute control of. Those others who are said as the watchmen, not security men. And that is how most chieftains started. So while they go to hunt, and then it gets to a time they can't come back, they will spend three days, they will bring the game, and then you share, and then they will come, oh, and then that's the point of German, this is. The head of the deer for you. Then they started being thankful 